Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Marie and I recently asked if you guys were interested in a comparative analysis video and you guys said, hell yeah. So that's what we're doing today. In supermarkets, you're often faced with the choice of either choosing your food packaged in something like this, a metal tin, or in something like this, a Tetra Pak brick or cotton. Some grocery stores or brands have even switched from using a metal can to using these Tetra Pak bricks, which is often marketed as a more sustainable choice, but is it? So first of all, let's talk about the aluminium can. I've talked about this material before. I think actually aluminium was one of the very first impact analysis videos that I did. But if you're not really up for watching an ancient video at this point, I get that. So let's just quickly recap. Aluminium is made from bauxite ore, which requires intensive mining and refining. The electrolysis process to extract aluminium is energy intensive, primarily relying on electricity from fossil fuels. So producing new virgin aluminium releases a lot of CO2, contributing to what? Climate change. Bauxite mining also leads to deforestation, soil erosion and biodiversity loss. It generates red mud, which is a toxic byproduct that can contaminate soil and water sources. And the refining process generates wastewater containing heavy metals, which can pollute nearby water bodies. If you're at some point during this series think, well, is there really a way of industrially exploiting or using resources without contaminating water sources or causing soil erosion. No, no, there's not. So while aluminium is highly recyclable, not all cans are properly recycled. Some aluminium still ends up in landfill where it can take hundreds of years to degrade. Aluminium cans are also always lined with a plastic or epoxy lining. This is to protect the food inside because the food cannot be in direct contact with the metal. That's bad. Um, so instead you line the inside of cans and tins with plastic or epoxy. And some of this plastic and epoxy contains BPA or bisphenol A, which is directly linked to hormone disruption, reproductive issues and increased cancer risk. You put the plastic in the can to protect the food, but the plastic is also harmful. Yeah, ironic, obviously. Trace amounts of aluminium can also lead you into food, especially more so acidic juices or sodas, which can also cause health problems, although the studies on this are pretty inconclusive. But when zooming in on the environmental impact, aluminium cans are highly recyclable and about three fourths of all the aluminium that's been extracted from the ground is still in productive use today. In history, we have produced around 1.5 billion tons of aluminium and 75% of that is still being used over and over again in products. It's really circular material that you can recycle over and over again without it losing quality, which is a problem that we see with other materials like plastic. Recycling aluminium also requires 95% less energy. However, new aluminium does enter the market every single day and that production has a high environmental cost. So what about Tetra Pak? A lot of bad press is often given to products like aluminium cans because of their initial production impact, as well as the chemical health concerns. As a result, many companies and brands and stores are now offering their otherwise canned food in a Tetra Pak carton. And Tetra Pak is a mixed material product. It's actually the brand name. It is not the product name. This is called a carton or brick. But Tetra Pak is actually the brand. And according to their own website, Tetra Pak packaging consists of about 70% paperboard, 25% plastic and 5% and aluminium. And they also state that it is recyclable where adequate collection is available. Those cartons are mixed material. The recycling process of them is a lot more complex because it's a lot easier to put materials together than it is to take them apart again. That means that Tetra Pak recycling is often less efficient than single material recycling. You need very specialized facilities to separate the layers and that requires infrastructure that in many places simply do not exist. That means that Tetra Pak much more frequently ends up in landfill compared to something like a metal can. But when we try to look at the environmental footprint in different sectors, we can see that when it comes to something like both production and transportation, the Tetra Pak packaging actually has a much lower carbon footprint than something like glass and metal because it's much more lightweight, it's compact, which means that you can transport the material much more efficiently, which then consumes less energy, which then leads to fewer emissions. Even when collected for recycling, Tetra Pak cartons often get downcycled rather than turned into new cartons. The paper fibers can be reused often, but the separated plastic and aluminium layers are harder to recycle and may very well still be discarded. Some Tetra Pak cartons contain 
the ethylene layers that may degrade over time, potentially leaching small amounts of plastic and chemical binders into food and beverages. But how do the carton and the can compare? This life cycle analysis study from 2022, published by the Norwegian Institute of Sustainability Research, has been so kind as to compare these two materials. And this study had some pretty interesting and very contrasting findings. First of all, it found that when looking at production emissions, the carton had fewer emissions compared to metal, which points to more environmental advantages for the carton. However, when the study looked at circularity, the metal cans scored almost twice as high. This means that the potential to recirculate cans is greater. So in one environmental aspect, the carton outranks the can, and in another environmental aspect, the can outranks the carton. Recycling is a key component whenever we look at the environmental impact of these materials. And Tetra Pak seems to be aware and continuously increasing their goals for their product recyclability. It's currently at 25% globally, according to Reuters, so a fair bit lower than most metals. As Tetra Pak put it themselves, it is a potentially fully recyclable product if you have the right facilities to do it, which unfortunately, globally, is still lacking. This study from 2016, the life cycle assessment of progression in cradle to cradle certification levels, assessed various production and recycling scenarios of aluminium beverage cans and could conclude that increasing renewable energy and advancing to higher levels of certification had less of an environmental advantage than introducing increased use of recycled materials to aluminium cans. So increasing RC recycled content provides more improvements to environmental impacts than increasing RE renewable energy usage. Secondly, receiving a gold certification is not necessarily preferable seen from an environmental angle than a bronze or silver, since a higher certification level does not necessarily mean environmental environmental burden reduction in LCA sense. And I think this is interesting because it goes to show that environmental advantages can take many forms and is full of different aspects, but also that some aspects might be more beneficial to increase than others. One being how much circulated post-consumer material a product requires. As such, a completely recycled metal can might be better due to its recyclable properties, especially if Tetra Pak recycling isn't accessible to you. And Tetra Pak is aware of this. They have often expressed their desire to increase their recycling rates, but still has a lot to deliver on those goals. And there's also been mention of an aluminum-free Tetra Pak packaging, which would further reduce the production impact of the packaging. But that also seems to still be up in the air. And I don't know if you can tell where this is going, but Tetra Pak has been accused of greenwashing their products through their marketing, saying you're doing things and then not actually doing them. I see why people would make that assumption. <laughs> They've also introduced ideas of using bioplastic packaging. So much to be said about that. But I think what rubs people the wrong way often is that they constantly talk about the product as a 100% fully recyclable product, even though they are aware that infrastructure to recycle it everywhere does not exist. It makes it feel like they're saying, well, it can be done, you just can't do it. And that's just really unhelpful. To put this into perspective a little bit, 50% of Tetra Pak roughly is recycled in Europe. It's about 16% in the US and it's about 1% in Vietnam. And this just goes to show that not all recycling is created equally. While both the transportation impact and the initial production impact of Tetra Pak is lower than metal, metal can be recycled an infinite amount of times and turned into the same type of product again and again, where ultimately the cartons are headed for landfill. It might just have to go through a few downcycling steps beforehand, but ultimately that's where it's going. And I also want to include this study, which is technically a study about packaging for dairy products, but just stay with me. The study compares the impact of glass, metal, and cartons, etc. And this was their finding. Plastic, glass, and aluminium generally have high environmental impacts due to the production of their base materials. Beverage cartons have lower climate change impacts compared to plastic bottles and cups in nearly all cases studied. They also found that the carton has a lower impact than a single-use glass bottle. Because obviously, glass is one of the most high-impact materials that we can use for single-use packaging because it takes a lot of energy to produce and it's extremely heavy compared to other materials. But compared to a refillable glass bottle, aka a glass bottle that's part of a return system, the impact of that returnable bottle was lower than the carton. Now we started talking about glass versus carton, but I hope it's not too confusing. I hope it makes sense. I'm trying to show you the wide landscape of where this Tetra Pak carton fits in. But which one is better? If you're just as confused as when you started, just with more information in your head to process now, I don't 
explain you. It can be incredibly difficult to pit two types of materials against each other, especially when those two materials, although they have similar roles carrying our tomato sauce, they still have completely different journeys and completely different futures. But if this is any help, this is my take at this point. If Tetra Pak is recyclable near you, that's fine. Use that. If we're considering other types of impacts, like the health-related impacts, it might actually even be kind of sensible to choose a Tetra Pak packaging. But does that make it a perfect material? Absolutely not. Does it make it a sustainable material? I wouldn't go that far. I think oftentimes we consumers really appreciate very black and white answers. And as such, the information that we seek out tend to be very much like either this team or this team. It's a lot more nuanced than that. Unfortunately, because we tend to want that kind of communication, brands advertise their products as such, which means that I've seen during this research as well, a lot of marketing about cartons of bricks and Tetra Pak packaging, stating that it is a fully renewable material because it's made from paper fibers. And it's not, it's also plastic and aluminium, and it's a nuanced, complex, mixed material product that has many good properties and qualities, but is not perfect. And we need not only to see it in a vacuum, but within the context of how we use it and what's available for consumers in terms of disposal. Good try though. Obviously we can discuss which kind of disposable single-use material is better than others over and over again, but I think it also makes sense to mention, as we also briefly touched upon in one of the studies here, that circularity is extremely important to consider because that lowers the impact of basically all materials used in those systems, which means that refillable options, return systems, take-back programs, any kind of reusable circular business model will always be more preferable and will always have a lower impact than making single-use disposable materials over and over again. That's where the money is. Money being sustainability and not actual money, unfortunately. But does that mean using metal cans is bad? I wouldn't say so either. Actually, if recycling of Tetra Pak isn't available to you, it would be my recommendation to stick to metal if that's recyclable near you. If none of them is recyclable near you, Tetra Pak is better. I hope all of this is making sense. But when we use metal cans, there are some things that we should consider. So in order to make this easier, I have compiled a list. Look for cans that's made in recycled metal. Recycled steel, recycled aluminium, generally just better than using virgin material. Look up your local recycling facilities recommendations for how you sort and recycle your materials. Rinse food packaging in order to avoid contamination. If they want you to do that, do that. Avoid crushing aluminium cans unless it's specified that you need to do so by your recycling facility. Choose cans that's labeled BPA free. You can also opt for brands that's using safer plastic linings like polyethylene instead of epoxy coatings. And keep your cans cool and dry to avoid rust and damage. I also recommend you avoid dented or bulging can. So often when I talk about grocery shopping, I would always say buy the ugly one, buy the one no one else wants to buy. That's that is specifically for fruit and veg, when it comes to damaged food packaging like a damaged metal tin, I would avoid it since there's a risk that the inner lining is broken on the inside due to the damage, which means that the food is now in direct contact with the metal. We don't want that. And you can repurpose a lot of food packaging, both Tetra Pak as well as aluminium cans. But I really don't recommend that you reuse your metal cans for food storage. Whenever you open your can, transfer the food that you're not going to eat from it, onto a different container. And never throw metal in the trash, ever. It is an extremely precious material and we need to use it in the best and most clever ways. Throwing it in landfill, not it. And a very last summary of the findings look like this. If we're looking at recyclability and circularity, the metal can wins. If we're looking for the lowest carbon footprint, Tetra Pak wins. If we're looking for transport efficiency, Tetra Pak wins. And if we're looking for best long-term use, the metal can wins. I hope that this was helpful. If anything, I hope that this provided you with more nuance to an otherwise very black and white question. And I hope that this is something that you can use whenever you're faced with the choices in the supermarket. There's no way to say what's best for everybody because ultimately it depends on what you have available to you, what kind of recycling you have available to you, and what kind of options you have available in your stores. With that in mind, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below in the comments if you have any feedback, any additional things you want to add, or any requests for other videos like this where we compare different materials. I hope to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye.